Hello, hello, and welcome to another video from the Structures and Forces Unit. Today we're going to take a look at structural failure. Our question we want to take a look at today is what happens when structures fail and why do they fail? Okay, the outcomes we're going to cover today, SLO 1.5, identify points of failure and modes of failure in natural and built structures. SLO 2.3, identify tension, compression, shearing, and bending forces within a structure and how these forces can cause a structure to fail. And lastly, analyze a design and identify properties of materials that are important to individual parts of the structure. So today's structure of the day is the world's tallest tower, the Burj Khalifa in Dubai. Also the set of an incredible stunt from the movie Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. If you haven't seen the stunt, I highly recommend YouTubing that video. The Burj Khalifa in Dubai is also known as the Burj Dubai, and it is a super scraper, which means it was completed in January 2010 and is 828 meters or 2,717 feet tall. It is the tallest man-made structure ever to be built, and the total cost of the project was $1.5 billion. At one point in early 2009, the office space reached 4,000 feet per square foot which is $43,000 per square meter. And the residences cost $3,500 square feet, or $37,500 per square meter. Fantastic. That is amazing, amazing uh, architecture and amazing cost to building and living in that building. So on the flip side of the world, we have this bridge in Minnesota. It's called the I-35 West Interstate Bridge. This picture was taken in May of 2006. Now, unfortunately, in July of 2007, disaster struck and the bridge actually collapsed. Sadly, uh, 13 people did not make it off the bridge, but 145 did. This was one of the busiest bridges in the state of Montana, actually considered to be the third busiest bridge. So what caused the collapse and the ultimate failure of this bridge in the middle of the day? The thought is that this is the cause of the disaster. This part here. As you can see, there is some fracturing or stresses within the metal. Now, the National Transportation and Safety Board, or what's called the NTSB down in the States, determined that eight of these what's called gusset plates had found to be fractured in that central span or the central part of the bridge. Now these plates were found to be quote unquote undersized and inadequate to support the intended load of the bridge and they failed due to the increased load over time. There is roughly 140,000 vehicles that cross this bridge in a year. Now these plates when they were in place while the bridge was still standing looked like this and you can see uh, in June of 2003 how those plates were beginning to bend. Okay, and excess bending or bowing ultimately caused the, the, the incredible collapse of this bridge. And what's scary is that there are a lot more outdated and obsolete bridges all across the U.S. So, when we look at structures like this, or structures as this picture, what might cause such a structure to collapse? Well, no structure is perfect, and no material is perfect. No, if, even if enough force acts on a structure, it will begin to fail. But learning how they could fail helps us to design stronger and more durable structures. Now, structures need strength, and they need stiffness in order to resist failure or resist excessive force. External forces can cause internal forces in the structure. We've talked about external forces such as living and dead or dynamic and static loads. Now when those dynamic and static loads add forces or stresses to the bridge, internal forces such as compression, shearing, bending, torsion, or buckling begin to happen. So let's take a look at how materials uh, that have failed can demonstrate shear, bending or buckling, and torsion. First one, shearing. Now, when a solid material is compressed, small cracks or weaknesses can actually enlarge or break apart the material. One section may shear and can cause tilts 
or collapses. So in this picture here, you can see that compression has caused huge cracks in the side of this building, and it's beginning to shear. Shearing means that one side moves in one direction, and one side moves in the other direction. Some excessive shear damage is seen here. You can see that whole floor seems to have collapsed within itself because of undue or inappropriately um, formed structure. The stress on the, on the structure itself has caused this collapse. It could be due to a natural disaster, I'm not sure. Uh, it could be due to um, simple building failure. Force number two let's take a look at is buckling. Now again, compression force can cause material to bend on the inside of the curve and pull or snap on the outside of the curve. So what does that mean? Well, if we take a look at this concrete pillar here, this part here is the inside of the curve. Okay, We would say that this part will bend in here, but the outside of the curve, which is the one out here, it will actually snap. And once those snap, we see catastrophic failures. In Kobe, Japan in 1995, a massive earthquake caused buckling of an entire span of bridge, which collapsed and essentially just fell over. We also saw buckling happen on September 11th when the Twin Towers fell. The outer parts of the structure could no longer support the inner parts, which bowed outwards, snapped, fractured, and the building came down. Force number three is torsion. Now, twisting of materials can cause failure as sections of the structure slide past one another. And we see that such as the, Tecara, uh, the Tacoma Narrows Bridge, where this twisting and bending and, and, and movement of the bridge deck ultimately caused all the concretes to collapse and the uh, stringers or cables to fail as well. Here is also another example of torsion. You can see dead center of the photo there in the sort of X, how this metal piece here has twisted, okay? And this one also has been twisted because of it, not causing or leading to structural failure. Now, fatigue fractures start out at the beginning as minute or small cracks it can grow under the action of stress. Now, fatigue happens in metal, and metal breaks down over time and extended use. Metal can get bent or twisted over and over and over and eventually snap. Now, the particles in the metal will actually move farther apart over this bending and twisting over time. And that bending and twisting over time makes the metal have less attraction to each other within the particles and begins to crack. Now, when a crack develops, it weakens the metal, and this is metal fatigue. Metal fatigue can eventually lead to metal failure. Here's an example of metal fatigue. You can see all the rivets or dots around the hole, and then the ultimate tearing or ripping of the metal itself. Now, unfortunately, this happened on a Southwest Airlines Flight 812. This is what it looked on the inside of the plane. Now, nobody was harmed, but the plane did have to make an emergency landing. When federal investigators looked into it, they said that the entire length of a five-foot-long tear in the skin of Southwest Airlines Boeing 737 showed evidence of pre-existing fatigue cracking. Investigators say this pre-existing cracks could have caused the damage to the Southwest airplane, which was forced to make an emergency landing. Now, this happened in April of 2011. It was constant metal fatigue and stress and bending on the outer part of the metal that caused it to fail. The most famous um, airline failure to date uh, with minimal um, injury was Aloha, Air Airlines, Aloha Airlines Flight 243. Now on April 28, 1988, this airplane was traveling between two Hawaiian islands and it suffered extensive damage after explosive decompression in the flight. What happened was that metal fatigue had led to the roof being less stable and less um, complete and the entire section you see there came off at one time and decompressed the airplane quite violently. Uh, only one person uh, was killed in this accident. Uh, 65 passengers were injured, but all other people on the plane made it. Now, when we make use of these stresses, they can actually be good things. Snapping, twisting, buckling, bending, and shearing can be used as um, can be used as 
a good feature within structural failure. And so what do I mean by good features? Well, take a look at cars, okay? The bumper and sheet metal around the cars are designed to actually buckle during a collision. And this entirely uh, saves and keeps the passenger safe because the frame is intended to buckle and bend and absorb all the energy of the crash. Now, here we see a 2017 Ford Fusion in the middle of a safety test. And you can see that it has struck that wall, airbags have been deployed, and the, the car is pretty much toast. But in this video that we're going to show here, you can see in slow motion how the car actually buckles or absorbs the energy. And it'll look like vibrations and small dents that just suddenly appear in the car. So let's take a look at this in real time. Okay, now let's take a look in slow-mo. You can see how the metal begins to ripple, and that is buckling. The whole bottom of the car had buckled too during that collision. If you didn't see it, back it up and watch it again. We're going to look at it from a different angle too. All the vibrations and bending and ripples you see, that's buckling happening in the frame, and it's absorbing all the energy of the car, or all the energy of the collision. Shearing. Now, in boats, in the outer motor, there's a propeller and it's attached to something called a drive shaft. And this is a long bar that's connected to the engine. As the pistons in the engine rotate and moves, it turns the drive shaft, which causes propellers to turn. Now, if you had a seaweed or something tangled in the propeller, that would cause the propeller to stop, but the drive shaft would still be spinning. Now this could cause extensive damage throughout the entire drive chain. So what happens is inside the propeller is a pin. And this is called a shear pin. This pin will break and the motor will spin freely instead of being damaged. Okay, these are also found in snow blowers. So what am I talking about here? It's that pin right there. That's a shear pin. So if you have a whole bunch of seaweed wrapped around that propeller blade, okay, it causes the drive shaft to freeze as well if the motors if the propellers are not wanting to turn. So what they'll do is they'll put that shear pin and it'll cause the propellers to spin freely when the drive shaft is being turned by the engine. This prevents further damage and all that really needs to be replaced is the shear pin. Now twisting is actually advantageous in that we use um, twisting to make a lot of fibers. Now a spinning wheel will twist cotton fibers, for example, so tightly that they lock together and form a fabric. The twisted yarn is much stronger than straight strands bundled together. And we looked at that in the first unit with plants for food and fiber, how uh, those fibers are twisted together to make them stronger. So just in review, those external forces can cause internal forces in the structure. Each type of internal force can cause damage. And that's as sh like shearing, that is such as bending or buckling and torsion. Okay, a little bit longer a video today, but gives you an overview of structural failure and what happens when structures do fail. Thanks for watching.